just found the station that plays the kind of music no one else has the guts to. Planet Rock, the UK's classic rock station. Hello, this is Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull, here on Planet Rock with a sexy new radio series, Under the Influence, for all you lovers of that fine, upstanding and seminal stuff which sits out on the periphery of what we call, by general disagreement, rock music. Now, this is not meant to be a historically definitive top 10 or 20 of the most influential pieces ever. It's really just a reflection of the music I grew up with and developed too. The music which shaped my life as a teenager through my 20s and as we'll hear later on through middle age and on into the twilight zone. Music to set pubescent gonads a-twitching. Music to light your fire. Music to make you mad. And music to lie down with lambs to. So, first, the Americans are coming. That's where all the great names of British rock got the bug from. John Mayall, The Stones, Cream, The Zepps, The Who, and me too. All influenced by the big boys across the big water. Let me take you back to the blues. Let's forget that namby-pamby Bill Haley and Elvis wee-wee. Let's go straight to the man himself, the mudster, Mr. McKinley Morganfield, a.k.a. Muddy Waters. You know, it probably isn't politically correct these days to sing, especially if you're an older guy like me, or Muddy was when I first heard him, to be singing about younger girls. So, avoiding the obvious scary moments of Gary Glitterism, we have to be a little bit delicate in the way we introduce this song, where Muddy is singing in, in no uncertain terms about the, the merits, in many ways, of uh, a young lady who is only 19 years old. <laughs> It took me a 
long time to find out my mistake. It took me a long time, a long time to find out my mistake. It sure did, man. But I bet you my bottom dollar, I'm not fighting no more frog for snakes. I started checking. I found out my downfall from 1930. I'm telling all of my friends I'm not fighting no more frog for snakes. All right now. Seven, I got to correct all of my mistakes. Well, man, 1957, I got to correct all of my mistakes. I'm telling my friends, including my wife and everybody else, not quite a normal frog for snakes. That was Sonny Boy Williamson with Fattening Frogs for Snakes. Harmonica player supremo. I mean, I wish I could get that tone when I started playing harmonica. It just sounded like some squeaky old thing. And then after listening to Sonny Boy and all those other great harmonica players, not a lot changed. But we all produce our weird and individual tones. And Sonny Boy did this great thing of playing a tiny little baby harmonica completely inside his rather large mouth, which is a bit of a stage trick, but you know, a lot of fun for those who, uh, who enjoy the idiosyncrasies and the eccentricities of the bluesmen. Fattening Frogs for Snakes with Sonny Boy, one of his many great classic blues songs. We're going to move on to someone who kind of got a little bit more rocky, a little bit more dark in his approach to music. He enjoyed some actual commercial success, unlike a lot of his peers. He, this guy actually had some hits back in America. He was a kind of a crossover black blues man who got accepted almost by, by white middle-class society. This is a piece, like, probably his most famous song, and certainly the first one I heard and learned when I was a teenager. It's Howling Wolf with Smokestack Lightning. <laughs>
Hard Rock with Ian Anderson under the influence. <laughs> Singing through you to me Thunderbolts caught easily Shouts the truth peacefully was electricity from the 1967 Captain Beefheart album Safe as Milk championed by John Peel on his BBC show back in the summer of 1968 this stuff really caught my attention I was a big Captain Beefheart fan from the word go coming back after the break with some more Captain Beefheart material exercise it's so overrated you want to raise your pulse you just sit back and enjoy the magic of rock turn up the rock planet rock brings you ian anderson under the influence Ooh, i was born in the desert came on up from new orleans came upon a tornado so loud in the sky I wheel around all day with the moon sticking in my eye Hey, 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 all you young girls Wherever you're at I got a brand new Cadillac Got a Ferrari skin
Under the Influence with Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. Captain Beefheart there with Sure Enough and Yes I Do from the album Safe as Milk in 1967. Terry Bozio, my pal Terry, a very nice young man, very modest young man who uh, who played with uh, my, my other pal Eddie Jobson. And uh, Terry, Eddie Jobson and John Wetton formed the, uh, the band UK. Um, but that was after Terry's stint with uh, Frank Zappa first time around and uh, I think uh, Terry went on to have a long-standing relationship right up to Frank's uh, death some years later and was, was uh, I think greatly greatly values that period he spent with with Zappa and and uh, one album that that Terry played on the uh, Shake Your Booty album was um, was one that I think where Frank and Terry who I think was kind of new boy in the band they, they had a little bit of a double act thing going and one of my favorite songs from Shake Your Booty is the track City of Tiny Lights, featuring Terry Bozio, my, my good-looking young American pal, with Frank Zappa. <laughs>
City of Tiny Lights there from Frank Zappa and whatever appropriate mothers of invention were on hand at the time. Now, 1969, Jethro Tull's first US tour. We found ourselves, I think, in Seattle for the very first time ever that we played there. And uh, we were we were an opening act, as we were for most of that tour, this time for a, a band that um, we knew nothing about. We were told they were a little boisterous, a little bit on the intimidating side. They were the the forerunners of everything punk, and they were a scary bunch. They were the MC5, and one of the highlights of their show, so we were told, and I did witness this myself, is that their bass player would take a dump on stage into a bucket during their live performance every evening. Now, I, I have nothing but a, a, just a tremendous degree of admiration for such such control of both bowel and sphincter to be able to call upon to order a nice juicy turd just for the sake of pleasing the audience, if not the uh, the lowly support band who were actually perfectly horrified by the events that uh, that unfolded into the bucket. <laughs> and uh, but uh, MC Fire, well, you know, you couldn't help but have a soft spot for them because, as it turned out, when they they later turned up on a some Jethro Tull dates in Detroit a couple of years later, you know, they were they were sadder and wiser, very humble, and actually nice bunch of guys. They turned out to be, uh, you know, just kind of typically uh, punky showbiz, and uh, and really they they were they were a bunch of big softies. So for the MC Five, let's uh, let's remember them from their most innovative first moment of uh, of uh, of endearment that they passed on to us um, minus the uh, minus the stage antics but uh, uh, and, and of course rechristened to take out the naughty bit they, they this was uh, redubbed in america kick out the jams brothers and sisters i'm not quite sure which this version has whether we have the brothers and sisters or the naughtier one but let's it's it's right here at the beginning we can't escape it we won't miss it mc5 would kick out the jams <laughs> Get the feeling you got Sign up with that mic in my 
Frank Zappa was big buddies, as we said, with Captain Beefheart, and uh, Beefheart actually uh, worked with Zappa and produced uh, one or two vocals in, in the Zappa career, and Zappa, in turn, had a, a lengthy spell of working with Don Van Vliet and the other guys who went together to produce the probably the, the seminal Captain Beefheart album of all time, Trout Mask Replica. Pretty hard on the ears if you like you know, easygoing rhythm and easygoing harmony, but a, a, a work of of naive genius, I suppose you'd have to call it. And one of those produced by Frank Zappa, and uh, in fact recorded not by the the guys in the in the Beefheart band, but recorded by members of the Mothers of Invention, and then added as an afterthought to the Trap Mouse replica album is this track called "The Blimp." Don't ask me what it's about, but it conjures up all kinds of dark and satanic images. Coming up after the break. Frank, it's the blimp. When I see you floating down the gutter, I'll give you a bottle of wine. Put me on the white hook back in the fat rack, shad rack, shack. The something hoop, the something hoop, the blimp, the blimp. The crazy hoops, the crazy hoops. Their tail, their tail, tits, tits, the blimp, the blimp. The mothership, the mothership. The brothers hit under their hood. From the blimp, the blimp. Captain Beefheart with uh, some mothers of invention sneaking in on Trout Mars Replica with The Blimp. It was probably in the early part of 1972, I was on the road with Jethro Tull doing a tour and I got a phone call from one of the guys at Warner Brothers Records who um, said, um, would you take a call from uh, someone who wants to speak to you? And I said, well, depends who he is. I was sitting in my lonely motel room somewhere in the Midwest of America and, and uh, a voice came on the phone and said, this is your Captain Beefheart speaking. So I thought I, it was a wind-up <laughs> to begin with and kind of humoured the gent on the other end and started to dawn on me this really was the famous Captain Beefheart himself, who was on the phone to me essentially to invite himself on to a tour as, a, as an opening act for Jethro Tull. And much as I loved Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band, particularly the, the great guys who were part of the, the Magic Band during Trout Mask Replica, it did make me a little unnerved to say the least that these guys would be coming on before Jethro Tell, playing in venues that were generally speaking quite big but also playing to an audience that could be hostile and unforgiving um, if they were subjected to something that they didn't really feel was what they had come to see so it was with some trepidation that we agreed to have Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band on a Jethro Tell thick as a brick tour Boy, that was asking for it. And poor old Don Van Vliet went out there night after night on a tour with Jethro Tell to um, not exactly cat calls and boos, but more than just a tad of unrest <laughs> and disapproval. And it wasn't really a successful pairing at all. But the great thing about working with these guys was that they were such fun people. They were also very, very hungry people because they never got paid. Don had a shiny new suit to wear on stage and a couple of more in his wardrobe and his wife in tow and everything was hunky-dory, whilst the guys in the band were emaciated <laughs> through lack of food and oxygen. And uh, Don used to be pretty cruel with him. He could be merciless. Indeed, one of the things that always upset me about Don Van Vliet was that he was a bit of a bully. And underneath it all, he was lacking in all that bravado and charisma he was actually a big softy and really insecure he used to phone me up in the middle of the night saying hey anderson can we get together and rap and i said don it's three o'clock in the morning what do you want hey i need to talk to you about something you know it was always this thing he needed to have people around him he couldn't he couldn't function he couldn't sleep at night he was just a really insecure bag of nerves but outside to the outside world he was a big big man with with a tremendous personality, a genius gone slightly awry, a snake oil peddling from the back of a covered wagon kind of bloke, but could be cruel to his band, and, and they sometimes got a little upset. So, Zoothorn Rollo, real name Bill Harkle wrote, who played brilliant guitar, and, uh, and uh, Rocket Morton, 
<laughs> otherwise known as Mark Boston, his real name. Drumbo, real name John French. He was a great player, but not on not on the albums that uh, that followed uh, Trapmas Replica or during the tour where we played with them. Then it was Artie Tripp playing drums. They were all great guys. We had we had a lot of fun with them. And Don was someone you had to kind of tiptoe gently around. But we enjoyed working with him that experience, and we never really remained firm friends over the years. But he's probably one of the people on planet Earth. I wish. I really wish I could pick up the phone to and call today and say, how are you doing, Don? Unfortunately, he doesn't take calls, and he's not a well man these days. With great, great affection, in spite of the criticism from me and from others, let's hear another Captain Beefheart track. This is also from Trapmas Replicas called Steal Softly Through Snow. <laughs> Black paper between a mirror breaks my heart The moon frayed through dark velvet lightly apart Steal softly through sunshine Steal softly through snow The wild goose flies from winter Breaks my heart that I can't go Energy flies through a field and the sun softly melts a nothing wheel Still softly through sunshine Still softly through snow The black paper between a mirror breaks my heart that I can't go The swan, the feathers don't grow their spun They live two hundred years of love, they're one Through sunshine, steal softly through snow. That was Captain Beefheart with Steal Softly Through Snow from the Trout Mouse Replica album. First hearing Captain Beefheart, it was, uh, I suppose, hearkening back to slightly earlier days that, 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 I, that I would maybe almost prefer to to toss the next two songs in. They're, they're from the, the earlier Safe as Milk period in 1967. And, and although I always had a soft spot Trout Mass Replica, it was, in a way, kind of forced upon some of us relative disbelievers by the enthusiasm of John Peel and others. So, you know, I, I kind of like my beef heart a little more straightforward and simple, and, and sometimes earlier and later. Trout Mass Replica, great record, but some, some hard work in the middle. But this is an early one, Zigzag Wanderer from Safe as Milk. <laughs> You can't help. You can't help. 
thousand miles Found his queen in nature's scene Twist his face where he never been Was he saying Wanderer? Was he saying Wanderer? You can dance You can play With these old timbers You are fine I'm Ian Anderson, and you're listening to Planet Rock. Generally thought of as a, a bearded weirdo, a rather dark and scary guy, but given to a, a surrealistic and quite unforgiving sense of humour, Frank Zappa caught my attention with the album Hot Rats in 1969. By then, Jethro Tull was out and about in America playing the rounds, and although we never actually got to meet Frank Zappa, we, we heard him coming out of the radio speakers in cars and hotels and restaurants, and he was a... He was one of the two people, I guess, that, that for, for our British ears probably gave us this feeling that there was more to American rock music than, than just the Eagles and the kind of bland country-ish rock and the, and the old-fashioned rock and the, and the kind of rather pomp rock stuff that so many American bands did without perhaps the sense of humour that Frank Zappa had about it all. So I, I kind of really got into Frank Zappa. His guitar playing was something quite different to everybody else's as well. An almost excessive misuse of the wah-wah pedal, which he seemed to be afraid to be without, just as he seemed to be afraid sometimes to be without his sense of humour. But this is a great piece that uh, caught my attention, and, and strangely, of course, part of the ongoing association with Don Van Vliet, Captain Beefheart, who sings on this particular track from the Hot Rats album, Willie the Pimp. <laughs>
Red Rock with Ian Anderson and It's so hot. Looks like you have three beats clone. The moon's so full. What? Hand on a pumpkin. You know there's something. The moon was a stone's throw. Show. I need to say hello to the crow. Like the fire piano. The moon showed up and it started the show. Tonight there'll be ice cream. Ice cream for crow. Ice cream by of the wordplay Captain Beefheart from the 1982 album Ice Cream for Crow right at the end of his recording career he still like, came up with gems like the past sure is tense <laughs> yeah all three minutes and 24 seconds of Beefheart's very very wayward lyric writing but yeah I, I, I still find that just as good as anything he did before this is Ian Anderson and you're under the influence we'll be back after the news with something that'll light your fire
UK's only classic rock station. You're back with Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull, and you're under the influence. Listening to some of the, the great music that, that shaped my musical life from the beginning and through till now. This particular group we're going to hear first is probably best known, not for the, the band members, but for the charismatic and, and flawed lead singer, Mr. Jim Morrison. Never really a particular favourite of mine, He's a, either as a, as a voice or as a performer, but he certainly had that thing, that charisma that he had in spades and so many other people didn't. I never quite got to enjoy it, but I did like some of the music and they had a a quirky band feel that was quite different to everybody else. It wasn't uh, it wasn't guitar-driven rock. It was something that had a lighter and sometimes more jazzy feel. And I guess I kind of have a soft spot for Jim Morrison and the Doors that has grown over the years. And so nice to hear something from a band that's peculiarly American and peculiarly innovative in a way that uh, has given rise to that 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 great. Uh, great subvertive hero of American rock music, Jim Morrison and the Doors with Light My Fire. You know that it would be untrue You know that I would be a liar If I was to say to you Girl, we couldn't get much higher Come on, baby, light my fire. Come on, baby, light my fire. Try to set the night on fire. The time to hesitate is through. The time to wallow in the mire. Try now, we can only lose. And our love become a funeral pyre. Come on, baby, light my fire Come on, baby, light my fire Try to set the night on fire
hesitate is through No time to wallow in the mire Try now we can only lose And our love become a funeral pyre Come on baby, light my fire Come on baby, light my fire Try to set the night on Planet Rock with Ian Anderson under the imps. Trains are rolling. Yeah, a lot of us get into that train thing. You know, it's uh, it's such a, it's such a great metaphor, isn't it? The train for being in that unstoppable frame of life where the suspending moment captures your attention. And you know, locomotive breath, one of my songs, and Captain Beefheart did. Oh, I guess um, 
just just shortly afterwards, curiously, a piece, another train song called Click Clack. And that's a great piece of music. I love that. Great, great, great rhythm going on from Artie Tripp there on the drums. So that's Captain Beefheart back again. Now, he did another album pretty much uh, immediately after The Spotlight Kid, on which Click Clack was a track. He went on to do Clear Spot. Similar title. A little weird, really. Then had a bunch of songs that maybe were a little bit a little bit softer and not so approved of by the Beefheart fans, but one particular track probably stands above the others as being, for me, simply the best Captain Beefheart and Magic Band track ever. This features the famous long, lingering lunar note from Bill Harkle wrote, otherwise known as Mr. Zoothorn Roller. This is a piece called Big Eyed Beans from Venus. Distant cousins, there's a limited supply, and we're down to the dozens, and this is why. Big eyed beans from Venus, oh my, oh my. Boys and girls, earth people around the circle, mixtures of man alike. Big eyed beans from Venus, don't let anything get in between us. Beam in on me, baby, and we'll beam together. I know we always been together, but there's more. Mr. Zoothorn Rolo, hit that long, lunar note and let it flow.
Planet Rock with Ian Anderson under the influence. Give me your dirty love Like you might surrender to some dragon in your dreams Give me your dirty love Like a pink donation to the dragon in your dreams I don't need your sweet devotion And I don't want your cheap emotion Whip me up some dragon lotion for your dirty love Give me your dirty love Like some tacky little pamphlet in your daddy's bottom drawer Give me your dirty love I don't believe you've never seen his book before I don't need no consolation I don't want your reservation I only got one destination and that's your dirty love Your dirty love was Dirty Love from Frank Zappa's Overnight Sensation album in 1973. That was one of the great Zappa albums, probably for me the best one. It had some great tunes on it, some great lyrics. It was upbeat, but great musicianship from a very good band featuring drummer Ainsley Dunbar, an English guy. Used to be one of the bluesers in the early days of Jethro Tull and others at the Marquee Club, if I remember correctly. But they were, they were a great band that Zappa had at that particular moment, and Dirty Love was one of those songs that well, some people might want to leave it in their daddy's bottom drawer, but I think it comes out for a regular airing in my household anyway. Coming up after the break, an even naughtier song from Mr. Zappa. This one, well, talks of uh, assisted love in the nicest possible way, courtesy of a one and a half volt battery or two. Mm-hmm, 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 right after the break. Planet Rock. The UK's classic rock station. He was never dull with Tal. Now Ian Anderson is under the influence on Planet Rock. I couldn't say where she's coming from, but I just met a lady named Dynamo Hum. Just rolled on over, said, look here, bum, I got a $40 bill, say, you can't make me come. You just can't do it. She made a bet with her sister who's a little bit dumb. She could prove it any time all men were scum. I don't mind that you called me a bum, but I knew right away she was really gonna come. So I got down to it. I whipped off her bloomers and sniffed my thumb and applied rotation on a sugar plum. And stroke till my wrist got numb But I still didn't hear no dynamo hum Dynamo hum Dynamo hum, dynamo hum Where's this dynamo 
coming from I done spent three hours and I ain't got a crumb from the dynamo Dynamo, dynamo from the dynamo hall sister who was holding the bed and wondered what kind of trip the young lady was on. The $40 bill didn't matter no more. When her sister got naked and laid on the floor, she said Dynamo might win the bet, but she could use a little. If I wasn't done yet, I told her. Just because the sun was a place in the sky, the reason to swim I would give her a try. So I pulled on her hair, got her legs in the air, and asked if she had any cooties in there. What do you mean, cooties? No cooties on me! She was buns up kneeling, I was wheeling and dealing. She surrendered to the feeling, and she started into squealing. Dynamo watched from the edge of the bed with her lips just a-twitching and her face gone red. Some drool rolling down from the edge of her chin while she spied the condition her sister was in. She quivered and quaked and clutched at herself while her sister made a joke about her mental health till Dynamo finally did give in. But I told her all she really needed was some discipline. Kiss my aura, Dora. Mm, it's real Angora. Would y'all like some aura? Right here on the flora. And how about you, Fauna? You wanna? Sound like you're choking on something. Did you say you want some more? Well, here's some more. Oh, sure. Look, you think I could interest you in a pair of zircon encrusted tweezers? Tweezers. Wait a minute, let me sterilize them. Give me your lighter. I couldn't say where she's coming from, but I just met a lady named Dynamo Home. Said, look here, bum, I got a $40 bill Say, you can't make me come You just can't do it I whipped off a bloomers and stiffened my thumb And applied rotation on a sugar plum I poked and stroked till my wrist got numb And you know I heard some dynamo hum Some dynamo hum Dynamo hum Dynamo hum Dynamo Dynamo From the era where Captain Beefheart and his now not so magic band were the departure of the really key guys who left 
Hmm, perhaps I was a little responsible for this. They left they left Mr. Beefheart to form a band called Mallard, since Don Van Vliet, Captain Beefheart, owned the name, the magic band, and would not part with it. It was really quite disapproving about Zoothorn Rollo and and Rocket Morton and the other guys leaving to do something on their own. But they had had enough of Don Van Vliet by that time and wanted to move on and play music of their own and and take take with them, I guess, some of the great experiences of working with the captain. But outside of his rather rather over-the-top influence. So I brought them over to England to record in my studio in London and paid for the sessions and said, hey guys, if you make a record and you get a deal, you can pay me back. Needless to say, they didn't, but it wasn't because they didn't get a deal. They did, but it just didn't sell very many copies. The Mallard album was okay. They had a new singer that was brought in in spite of my kind of insistence that they should not replace, you know, they should not try to replace Captain Beefar, but do the job themselves. I tried to get Rocket Morton to be the singer, but he was he was too scared. So they brought in some guy to do the singing who was perfectly lovable and nice, but not really up to the mark. And so uh, Mallard never really took off after a couple of attempts, a couple of albums, it was shelved. So I kind of take responsibility, not for breaking up the magic band, but just trying to give the good guys a chance in a life after Beefheart. When Don moved on to do rather more um, deliberate attempts to cross over into the world of commerciality, it was not approved of. This album, Blue Jeans and Moonbeams in 1974, and we're going to hear the title track from that now, was not well approved of. But over the years, I've got to kind of enjoy this song. In fact, I once, just for a laugh, sitting in my recording studio, made a recording of Blue Jeans and Moonbeams, and it really wasn't half bad. But I'm not going to let you hear it. This is the real thing. Captain Beefheart, Blue Jeans and Moonbeam. I've been hoping on Mondays, some hows and moon days, Sundays and some days, never seen some days. I'm trying in all ways and learning in between Blue jeans and moonbeams, blue jeans and moonbeams I've been working, I've been loving underneath the moonstone sky I know there's many things I've never seen
brings you Ian Anderson under the influence. That chain puller. That chain puller. Puller, puller. A chain with yellow lights that glistens like oil beads. And on its slick smooth trunk that trails behind all cracks and dumps. It whistles like a root snatched from dry earth, sod busts and rakes with grey dust claws, announces its coming in the morning. This train with grey tubes that houses people's very thoughts and belongings. Remains and belongings. A gray cloth patch caught with four threads in the hollow wind of its stags. Ripples felt fades and gray spots clacks. Lunch in the cushion thickets. Oh, <laughs> oh, 
Yet another train song from Captain Beefer from the 1978 album Shiny Beast. The song was called Bat Chain Puller, as if you hadn't guessed that already from the long, long outro with a very, very deep voice. There again, that was one of the great songs that Captain Beefheart came up with surprisingly late in his recording career, but he did make these albums towards the end that, that still had some real gems on them that were in their own way, or I think were everything everything that we expected, and, and in many ways just as good as the, the things that we love from earlier on. And Bat Chain Puller, for me, that's one of them. There'll be more after the break from Frank Zappa. You're back with Ian Anderson, Under the Influence. Listening to some more Frank Zappa now. This is from later on in Frank's career, 1979, from the Chic Your Booty album, where, I don't know, again, it could be pretty politically incorrect these days for Frank to do that album cover. If he was still alive, he probably would. <laughs> there you go. Get us all into trouble. Chic Your Booty was a great album, and one of my favourite songs, which again is almost as politically incorrect as you can get, I think even Frank might have to think twice about naming a song Jewish Princess. Got a lot of nasty letters in the Times. I want a nasty little Jewish princess With long bony nails and a hairdo that rings his a horny little Jewish princess With a garlic aroma that could level to coma Long Well, she can swallow my pride I need a hairy little Jewish princess With a brand new nose Knows where it goes I want a steamy little Jewish princess With overworked gums Who squeaks when she comes I don't want no troll I just want a Yemenite hole I want a darling little Jewish princess Who don't know shit about cooking is arrogant looking A vicious little Jewish princess To specifically happen With a pee-pee that's snapping All up inside I just want a princess to ride All right, back to the top Everybody twist I want a funky little Jewish princess la, la, la. A grinder, a bumper with a pre-moistened dumper A brazen little Jewish princess oh, oh. With titanic tips <laughs> and sandblasted zits She can even be pulled So long as she does it with four of the Jewish princess With a couple of sisters Who can raise a few blisters A fragile little Jewish princess With Romanian thighs Who weasels and lies For two or three nights Won't someone send me a princess who buys Won't someone send me a princess who buys Won't Coming back to Frank Zappa towards the end of our show, it's with some sadness that I have to remember an occasion when I think I was in the theatre in Portland, Maine, when the bad news came through. I was sitting in my dressing room and there was a radio playing in the background. Bad news came through that Frank Zappa had, had finally left the building. He'd, um, he had died of prostate cancer after a long battle. And I 
I broke down and cried, and I drank half a bottle of wine before I went on stage that night, which I've never done in my life before. And believe me, I won't do it again, because it was probably my worst concert ever. I was, uh, I was not in good shape when I started to sing. But in a sense of, uh, in a sense of kind of personal embarrassment, I, I have to tell you that during the months before Frank di died, I, I had several messages from the man via family or friends saying, give Frank a call. And, you know, it's so hard to pick up the phone to a man that you never met, whose music you loved. And as far as I knew, Frank Zappa did not like Jethro Tull. He had, he had specifically said on more than one occasion you know, how much he disliked Jethro Tull, along with many of the other British bands who came over and perhaps usurped the position of, uh, of some of the American bands at the time and had great success, perhaps at the expense of the Americans. Maybe that's the way he saw it. Maybe he just didn't like the fact that we wore trousers that were a little too tight and had long hair and, and um, you know, maybe we were just too cocky. But whatever it was, he didn't seem to like Jethro Tull back then, so I was surprised to hear that he wanted to talk. And what do you do? How do you pick up the phone to a man that you know is dying? What do you say? I, I found this very difficult. I picked up the phone on more than two or three occasions. I dialed the number, of his, his home, home number in Los Angeles, and... And before the phone picked up, I put the receiver down. I just couldn't do it. Didn't know what to say. And then when I got that terrible news, there was this profound feeling of regret that I never, never did get to speak to Frank Zappa. And I wish I'd had the time. Wish I'd had the nerve. Wish I'd had, wish I'd had the, uh, well, not compassion, just the common sense, really, to find the right things to say to Frank in his final days. And I didn't do it. So with that sense of profound regret, we'll play a piece. But kind of cheers you up because it's got all the fun that Frank Zappa ever had, all rolled into one, and is uh, is perhaps a, a fitting tribute to the departure of Mr. Zappa from this world. It's called Elvis Has Left the Building from Broadway the Hard Way. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has just left the building. has just left the building Those are his footprints right there Elvis has just left the building To climb up that heavenly stair He gave away Cadillacs once in a while Had sex in his underpants, yes he had style Bottom jumpsuits, that's them in a pile But he don't need them now Cause he's making Jesus smile Elvis has just left the building Here he goes! Those are his footprints right there Elvis has just left the building To climb up that heavenly stair The angels all love him, he brings them really with droplets of moisture from his handkerchief Cherubim and seraphim whiz over his head Jesus let him come back, we don't want Elvis dead Like a warthog in heat He knows we all love him We'll just watch him eat So take down the foil From his hotel retreat And bring back the king For the man in the street Oh, Elvis has just left the building Those are his footprints right there Elvis has just left the building He's up there with Jesus in a big purple chair. The great Frank Zappa there with Elvis has left the building. Well, Frank Zappa checked out and uh, his music lives on. That's the important thing. I was at a, a manic Harley Davidson Bikers Festival in South Dakota a couple of years ago. Why did they invite Jethro Tull to such a thing? I really don't know. But it was just almost too good an offer to refuse. So we bowled up there and uh, 
There were thousands and thousands of Harley Davidson riders there, and they looked pretty mean, a lot of them. Uh, we had an opening act that night, um, pretty scary, because probably the ultimate anthem for the biker is Born to be Wild by Steppenwolf. And I have them play that as their final song in their set before we have to go on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that was a trial by fire. So, what are you going to do? I thought, well, yeah, I could, could go out there with the mandolin and play a solo acoustic mandolin version of uh, Born to be Wild, but maybe they wouldn't get the joke. <laughs> so I decided to give them some, uh, some heavy metal flute instead. We got away with it by the skin of our teeth, and halfway through the show, all these Harley Davidson riders who were kind of in the front row, sitting aside their great machines, started tooting their horns and flashing their lights. And I thought, uh oh, we're in trouble now. This is the, this is the, this, we're being gonged off the stage. But in fact, the opposite was the case. The uh, flashing the lights and hooting the horns was a, a, a finally hard won sign of approval. <laughs> so we got out of there alive. That was the main thing. John Kay has always been the singer of Steppenwolf, and although he was born in Germany and moved to Canada as a young lad, learned to not only speak, but sing American in the all American way. I met him again at a TV studio last year, I think it was, to celebrate 50 years of rock and roll. And, and John Kay and Steppenwolf were on the TV show, and I went backstage and said, Hey, John, nice to see you again. And he looked over at me and said, Who are you? And I thought, Oh, dear, I'm being snubbed yet again by some kind of little hero who uh, <laughs> doesn't know who I am. I said, oh, I'm Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. I played with you a couple of years ago at a biker's festival. He said, oh, of course, man, yeah, I remember you really well. It's just that I can't see you. I'm registered blind. <laughs> who would have thought? He looked sad. So I thought the dark glasses you see were just kind of, just the kind of biker's cool image. But no, here we go. Or to be wild.
There you go, John Kay and Steppenwolf with Born to be Wild, the original recording. You were listening to Ian Anderson, under the influence, from the weird to the wonderful and some points in between. Join me next week for a clog-hopping insight into the world of British and Irish folk rock. OK, and a Canadian or two as well. They'll be mauling mandolins, battling bazookies and fighting fiddles. Here with the Earthlings on Planet Rock.